Doran, Lyle Wagoner, and her guests, Jerry Stiller and Ann Mira. Any questions? Anything you want to say or talk? Yes. Are you planning on making another record uh, soon? And after the show, would it be possible for you to sign? Oh, you're the one who bought that that album. <laughs> uh, yes, I have a lot of plans to make another record album. The company doesn't for me, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. But thank you. That's very sweet of you. Yes, I would be glad to during a stop. What's your name? Elaine. Okay, Elaine, sure. Would you give me a big hug and a kiss for $1,000 in cash? some purpose and my purpose is to find people who are unhappy and solve their problems and so I go from door to door helping those in need I really must be going now there's a couple in trouble and I'm going to help them whether they like it or not Darling, oh, darling, isn't it marvelous being the most happily married couple in the whole country? The whole country, the whole world. I can't imagine anybody being happier than I am. Except me. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you suppose we're so happy? I don't know. I think it's because we do everything together. <laughs> Shall we? <laughs> years of solid bliss. Oh, darling. <laughs> and to make things even more perfect, yesterday I got my promotion. I am now the assistant sales manager of the Acme Doormat Company. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Doormat. Oh. And to make things even more perfect, my boss is coming over for dinner to help us celebrate. Hey, let's toast ourselves with a martini. Good idea. <laughs> us. <laughs> Sorry, honey. Hey, I'd better finish dressing. Okay. Since your boss was coming over to dinner, I wanted everything to be perfect, so I hired a maid. Good idea, darling. You. You. Oh. Gosh, I've missed you. Oh, <laughs> the maid you sent for. Uh, please come in. Oh, now, I want you two to relax. I'm going to make this a perfectly wonderful evening for the both of you. You don't have to do a thing. Now, run along and get dressed. We are dressed. Oh, I didn't realize I was working for gypsies. <laughs> now, I'll just clear these dirty dishes off, and then I'll set the table. Those aren't dirty. Oh, that's all right, dear. Don't apologize. I understand. Oh, who 
Who has the drinking problem, you or your father? He's not my father, he's my husband. Well, you can see how alcohol can age a person. Well, I'll just get rid of this. Good riddance to bad rubbish. Now, just a minute, my husband does not have a drinking problem. I can understand why you haven't told her. You think she's too stupid to cope with it. But don't feel that way. Don't you understand that the only way to have a happy marriage is to bring these things out into the open? What things? Oh, the lying, the drinking, the cheating. Cheating? I would never think of cheating on my wife. Then why are you holding me like this? <laughs> this is ridiculous. May I, uh, do you mind if I have a word in private with my wife? Mind? I would. I wouldn't dream of interfering. Darling, you don't believe a word of this, do you? Why? Do you think I'm too stupid to cope with your drinking problem? I don't have a drinking problem. Would you mind getting down? Now, if you two lovebirds will excuse me, I'll go fix dinner in the kitchen and you can air your dirty laundry alone. But I am proud of you both, working as hard as you are to save a marriage that doesn't have a chance. <laughs> say? Nothing. Apparently that's the problem. You've been keeping things from me. What have I been keeping from you? I don't know, but I plan to find out. I have a right to know about the drinking and the lying. And the cheating. I told you I never cheated on my wife. I wasn't talking about you. <laughs> How dare you? I've never been so insulted in my life. I have never even looked at another man since the day we were married. Oh, yeah? I want to know who it is. Who is he? Come on, who? Oh. Guess who's coming to dinner? My boss, you've been carrying on with my boss. I've never even met your boss. What do you mean you never met your boss? Dear, dear, why don't you tell him about it? You'll feel much better. Why don't you just butt out of this, you nosy, meddlesome old busybody? Very well, I know when I'm not wanted. I'll leave. <laughs> don't cry, dear, I'll stay. I'll just go heat this up in the kitchen a little more. <laughs> Explaining to do. So do you, you lush. Lush. I'm t Was that the. Oh, yeah, it was the. Yeah, yeah. Your boss. yeah it's my boss. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Bill. Hey, I, uh, I hope. <laughs> show up on your unhappy doorstep someday. Better yet, be surprised, because I'm not doing this again. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the comedy of Ann Mira and Jerry Stiller. In real life, this lady, this, this uh, woman who you're looking at right now is, is not only a well, a consummate actress, which is what she is in front of you now, but she is my wife. And you have to separate the woman from the image. What are you doing? You're making a cake? What are you separating? No, I am trying. No, this let is me, Betty no. Crocker week or something. I'm trying to clean it's up. It's a complete package. Two legs, two arms, whatever. <laughs> I have to clean up, you know, the impression. You know, people write letters. They start to say, well, you know, you, why do you let her put a... Put Who writes letters? Oh, yeah, the letters you get. The ones in the crayon, yes. No. <laughs> hey, Jerry, we love you. We hate her. No, I, I, can I explain this? You know, in real life, Anne comes out and, and goes home, just like some of the women here in the audience. She shops, she cleans. Who are you living with? <laughs> <laughs> Shop clean. I think that's an obscenity. No, I am. <laughs> Who likes to clean? Anybody? You, mister? Come to my house Thursday. <laughs> no, somebody's got to do it. It's terrible. There's something growing underneath my couch. I don't know what it is, but I fed it three times. Uh, I, I could tell something on you, may I? 
May I? This happened to us. We were playing in Lake Tahoe, uh, George Washington's birthday weekend. I mention the time because uh, that was when President Nixon made his trip to China. Remember his visit to China? And uh, how fast you forget. <laughs> anyway, he took this trip to China and we're in a nightclub dressing room between shows. We're watching on the television. President Nixon, he lands in China. You know, he walks down the stairs. He shakes hands with Cho En Lai and Mrs. En Lai and all the En Lai's were there. <laughs> and uh, at one point, Cho En Lai, he gestures, you know, to the red Chinese band to strike up the music. And they start to play. Da, 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 da. Jerry turns to me and he says, gee, Ann, they have the same national anthem we do. <laughs> the whole point of this is that we all know how President and uh, Mrs. Nixon, you know, how they felt about the Chinese visit and Barbara Walters gave her opinions. Nobody heard from Cho En Lai and his wife how they felt about the Americans. But we're going to rectify that for you. We're going to be Mr. and Mrs. Cho En Lai, and we're in bed, and we're saying goodnight to each other right after the Americans left town. Oh, Choey, Choey. Oh, Choey, 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 Choey. I can't keep my hands off you. Try, will you? Try. I... Oh, Choey, a whole week. No kissing, no hugging, yeah, nothing. Well, I didn't want to make any noise. The Nixons were sleeping next door, you know what I mean? <laughs> No, oh, honey, you broke your back to please those well, foreigners. I tried. I did my best. Oh, I took did. them to the ballet. I showed them the Great Wall. I... Yeah, they saw the Great Wall. I wouldn't tell you what they wrote on the Great Wall. Listen, forget it. It's over now. Honey, it's... a grown man, the president of his country. You know what he writes on the wall? What? Dickie loves Pats. All right, forget it. It's over now. Tourists, real it's tourists. It's, uh, it's, it's one of those things, Oh, the right? reporters, they left the hotel a mess. Forget it. They Would took you... 56 ashtrays. 12 blankets and 40 towels. Chalk it up for experience, will you? It's Honey, I got to apologize. Apologize? What do you mean? I almost spoiled the whole visit for you. What do you mean? At the airport. What, you mean when you went up to Barbara Walters and you said, how do you do, Mrs. Nixon? Yeah, I felt terrible. Oh, listen, to me, they all look alike. Eh? I know what you mean. Around eyes. Yes, well, look, I, I, I really have to congratulate you, though, on the way you handled the banquet. That you was You like beautiful. the banquet, huh? From the wonton soup, the Mai Tais, the Sui cow. Honey, the egg rolls were frozen from Chung King. You could have fooled me. I would never know. Yeah. Really. Yes. I know they all love the banquet, though. Really? Yeah. What did they think of my shark fins? Oh, they loved your shark fins. I heard Walter Cronkite whispering to Henry Kissinger. What did he say? I can't believe I ate the whole fin. <laughs> hey, I got to ask you a question. What did you think of Henry Kissinger? He was cute. Did you know he was Jewish? Of course I knew he was Jewish. He pledged a thousand yen to our temple. Uh, I didn't like Harry Reasoner at all. He was very rude to me, honey. Rude? What do you mean? Well, he handed me his shirts. He said medium starch. Oh, I can't believe it. I got even with him, though. I told him off good. What did you say? Ring around the collar. Good, 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 good. Shirts were filthy. <laughs> well. We finally got rid of Charlie and Chan. Oh, those two big, fat, dumb pandas. Am I <laughs> glad we unloaded them? I didn't have the heart to tell them they weren't housebroken. <laughs> I didn't have the heart to tell them they were both gay. <laughs> Good night, Joey. I'm hungry. Mm, why don't I send off a Yankee? Terrific. Yeah.